All right, folks, Pachini is 88. We are back playing criminal case on Facebook. Let's head on to case number eight. Yeah, case number eight. Houston, we have a problem. We are going to Houston, Texas. All right, Ace, I think we're making good progress. Following protocol for when a time machine is sabotaged, which means contacting the president by any means necessary. In our case, that meant writing Chief Scott a letter explaining what's happening. We secured the letter in a safe deposit box. The bank will notify the chief about its existence in 2029. Chief will then send us a rescue ship that will be guided by the Beacon Kai Maid. But why did we leave New York? Well, since science machines will have to transport ours back, it's going to be massive, so it's going to need lots of room to land. Which brings us here to the Space and Aeronautics Research Agency, or SARA. Kai will secretly set up the Beacon, then we'll wait for the pickup time later today. I'm glad we're leaving soon. All the 60s spy stuff is making me worry about our true identities being discovered. Right. The Americans and Soviets are in a cold war, so there's a lot of tension on both sides. Quite, darlings. The two countries provided their superiority over to each other through means other than the war, including a space race. Hey, did you go to check out Sarah's launch pad with Zara? That's where Kyle set up the beacon, so we need to make sure no one's around, even this early. No problem, Amy. Let's get to the launch pad, Ace. Alright, so we got coins. Oops. There we go. No smoking sign, victim's body, I misclicked. Okay, let's go. Over. Exit, and then broken machine. Holy cow, Ace, you're right. There's a dead body here. Look at those marks on his face, should we? Hey, mission control, the cops have arrived. We are go for investigation. Officers, Thomas Segan, Sarah's best engineer, has been murdered. On the day I send men to the moon, it's catastrophic for my career as mission chief. Wait, the moon? So today's July 16th? Affirmative. This murder means my mission is on hold, so you must solve it ASAP. I'll be around if you need me. Wow, I can't believe the mission chief smokes on the launch pad. Man, the 60s sure was a different time. Anyway, he may want us to solve the murder ace, but we got another job to do. Let me check with Amy. Yeah, Amy, we're in a bit of a jam. There's a body on the Sarah launch pad, and right, we met the mission chief and said the launch is postponed, so. Alright, I'll tell Ace. Amy says we need to solve the murder. She's not aware if it did actually happen in our original history, but the murder is putting the historic launch at risk which means it's our job as time detectives to solve the murder and protect our history. Start with those broken pieces. One of them has a defibrillator symbol on it, a machine that's meant to shock a person out of cardiac arrest. And you're right, the marks on the paddle match to those on the victim's face. It must be the murder weapon. Quick, Ace, let's restore the defibrillator before sending it to the lab. And also, let's talk to the chief, mission chief, Houston. We've got a murder to solve. That's right. We grab a whole bunch of stars. I will see you guys back here. It's been Pachinius Idiot. Au revoir. Alright, folks, Pachinius Idiot. We actually grabbed some stars fairly quickly, I might add. Alright, so this is a defibrillator. Ace, you restored the defibrillator to use on our victim, but one of the paddles is missing. Let's keep an eye out for it. Let's send the defibrillator to Theo. Interesting. Let's make this quick, officers. Obviously, someone's trying to mess up this launch. They want to stop us from going to the moon. I'm supposed to call the president and tell him that we're here to have to reschedule. If I refuse, that'd be the worst failure of my career as a Sarah mission chief. 
Sounds like you're under a lot of pressure leading this mission. But could you tell us more about your victim? See again? Well, he's a hard working engineer here. Respected, efficient, a bit of a control freak. Do you know why the engineer was on the launch pad this morning? Well, Sigan sometimes worked on the rocket, but you usually find him here at his desk in the mission control room. Officer Ace and I will take a look at his desk. Thank you, sir. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Love my banana suit. Nice, got a star. Cool. Hey, Sarah's mission control room was the height of technology and science in its time. It's humbling to be here. Well, what did you find? The victim's cabinet it has his name on it. Let's get it open. And this is the astronaut's helmet, but whose? What's doing on our victim's death? Oh, I think there's a name on it. Let's feel the name of that helmet, Ace. I had a uh, floors voice. Zara, I've noticed you spent a lot of time in the tech room with Kai. Anything going on in there? Oh, Janice, Kai and I are just friends. But, anyways, let's focus on you. So, you smoked a cigarette the other day. That's not allowed in the time machine. My dear, that wasn't a cigarette, it was cannabis. But enough about our unruly activities. We have a murder to solve before we get rescued. Well, so it's okay for you to smoke weed, but not cigarettes. Alright. I mean, I'm for that. As you already know, Ace, your victim was attacked with a defibrillator. Was it a place in the palace on the chest? Your killer had the against the victim's head until his brain fried. Your victim tried to fight back, found bruises on his arms and chest where the killer would have held him down. Your killer's obviously very fit to have been able to pin him down like that. Well, the killer used muscle to commit the murder, but Ace will use brains to catch them. Florche. Yep. Yep, she has work. Uh, so does so does a lot of people actually. <laughs> Pretending to be a couple was fun, Zara. But it didn't give me a chance to show you my '60s dance style moves. We will have time to go out again before we're rescued. Well, at least I need to focus on this murder. But if you give us the results from the defibrillator we found next to the body, I'll owe you one dance. Oh my goodness, you got a deal. Found skin cells from your victim on a reading paddle of the defibrillator, so it's definitely your murder weapon. I also found fresh, fresh traces of white wine, moonbeam to be exact. Seems your killer had some on their hands when they grabbed the defibrillator. So the killer enjoys moonbeam. We'll be sure to catch them before the moonbeam strikes again. It's almost like moonshine. I'm thinking that that's supposed to be moonshine. Oh, I don't think the triangle's ever going away. Well, this was the victim's unlocked cabinet, Ace. Well, Joe, you're definitely catching up, that's for sure. Alright, who's this going to bring us to? Mark, instead of Mark Hamill, it's Mark Hamilton. Ace's astronaut helmet belongs to Mark Hamilton. His helmet was at our victim's desk. They probably knew each other. Let's go talk to this astronaut.
Guy looks like a piece of work. Agent Bucky. Oh, really? Was this FBI badge joined the victim's cabinet? Hey, so I agree. We should return it. This badge belongs to a certain Bucky Johnson. Wait, isn't that he the news agent we met while investigating the murder in New York? Hey, do you think this badge means that Bucky actually is an FBI agent? I guess it makes sense, but with all the Soviet spy stuff going on. Well, you had me fooled. Let's go talk to this FBI agent. Well, he's going to be shocked to see us, that's for sure. Mr. Hamilton, Officer Jason, I have some questions concerning Mr. Segan's murder. Are we? Oh, that nerdy guy? Well, it's a shame he's dead. He looked up to me, you know? So I'm for the hero that I am, the guy who's going to the moon. See, you gotta remind these scientific types who's a real boss. They like hearing it, too. I'm sure. You must be bummed that the mission's postponed. No, I'm not worried. I have faith in my destiny, Officer Ace. Eh, my guess is he was probably pissed. Agent Johnson, we found your badge. Give me that, Officer Ace. You're the cops they put on the engineers. Murder. Interesting. I was undercover when we last met. Made it easier to keep tabs on a Soviet spy whose murder you solved. Right, and your news agent cover was very convincing. I would never have guessed you were part of the FBI. But now we're investigating another murder. Do you know Mr. Segan? Not really. I make sure no Soviet spy on our scientific prowess. I'm more interested in protecting his work than I was his person. Still, this is a terrible loss for our country. I hope the Soviets don't didn't have anything to do with it. We'll be sure to find whoever is responsible, Agent Johnson. My guess is this is an inside job. Oh, man, Ace, I can't wait to see 2029. Penelope told me about the flying robots that bring you food. I'm going to teach you in a bit about our present while you investigate Ace, and now she can't wait to go. Well, first, Ace has to solve the murder. That way, the moon landing will happen as it did in our history, and there will actually be flying robots. So how's the investigation going? Well, Thomas Segan, the space engineer, was found dead on the launch pad. His brain was fried with the defibrillator. The mission chief is freaking out because the sunsault murder means postponing the moon landing mission, whereas that astronaut, Mark Hamilton, only thinks of it as his own destiny. But then there's Bucky Johnson, who's actually an FBI agent, but he just spends his time talking about Soviet spies. It's pretty intense, and I really can't think of anywhere else to search for clues. For once, an emergency that requires a doctor in history, not medicine. Ace, I know exactly where you should go next. Thank you, Orlando. He's been very helpful. But anyways, guys, let's see you guys in chapter two. This is pitching it to eight. Over now. Stars, let's head on to chapter number two. Yep, 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 yep. And Orlando, where do we need to go? It's a little known history tidbit that Saren plays when he's hit the rocket. A diner not far from here. It was a good change of scenery for them. I'm sure your victim would go there often himself, Ace. Well, it won't hurt to look, I guess. Ace, let's go get to that diner. Whoa. That definitely looks like they have a problem. Photo, there you go. Nice. We get a star. He sits perfect in the picture, but who's the lady with him? Let's look this gal up in the local police files. And this is uh, some sort of 60s high tech gadget. You're right, Ace. This has Sarah's logo on it. Well, it looks like a number. Can you make it out? Maybe. Randy, the, the weapon for today's case is a defibrillator. 
So those things they use to shock people back to life. Some person just hooked it up to a guy's head. That's not it. That's probably it. No more sponsorship stuff. Um, but to be fair, that's usually Kian who's working on a lot of that stuff. Okay, this guy's good with electronics. So let's send him the machine with that mystery number to him. Do we know who this is? It's always my question. Nope. I don't think so. Joan Segan. According to local police files, the woman next to her victim in the picture is his sister. His younger sister, to be exact. Joan Segan. Alright, so let's go, go tell Joan the bad news. What's up, Kai? What's going on with this thing? Oh, Ace, I didn't see you there. I'm watching a telenovela to take my mind off the sabotage. It's about a woman who solves crimes in outer space called Delitios Ultraterrestres. That was probably horrible. Sounds fun. Can I watch an episode with you sometime, Kai? Well, yeah, of course, Zara. And Ace, I did look at that machine you sent me. It's a vintage calculator. Oh, wow. Things were really much bulkier back then. What was the number for? Well, it seemed familiar, so I dove back into my college books. And after some research, I found what this number refers to. It's an employee's ID number, and that of Betty Hawkins. Ah, she's an incredible mathematician, although it took years for people to recognize her work. So this mathematician forgot a calculator at the diner. Let's get back to Betty Hawkins, Ace, and ask her about her victim. I don't think her name is Betty Hawkins, but she's... They did... The, she was the, um... They did that movie on her. You guys will be able to tell us, me in the chat. But they did the, um, that, that movie about all the women who help you get into space. What the hell would you like in burgers? Loves lettuce or rocket? Unfortunately, I have some bad news. I'm afraid your brother's been found murdered. Thomas dead? He's dead? Let me just put this tray down. Pretty cola. That's pretty funny. Thomas was a wonderful brother, so smart and successful. I loved working near his office. He'd come in every day, which was touching, you know? Would your brother ever come with his colleagues? Most folks from the space program come here, even the astronauts. Like that hunky, muscular Mark Hamilton, you know? Hidden Figures, that was the movie, yep. But Thomas was a loner, had his head up in the stars. So sad to think he won't see his rocket launch. Miss Hawkins, we found your calculator. Oh, thank you, Pets. I'm a little fuddled after hearing about Mr. Segan's murder. Did you know him well? Yeah, we worked together. I analyzed the volumeter levels for air displacement. Mr. Segan would incorporate the results to his studies. Any idea why he was on the launch pad early this morning? Mr. Segan probably had an epiphany during the night and wanted to test it out before the launch. I see. Well, thank you for time, Miss Hawkins. I agree, Ace. Since we're back in the mission control room, we may as well give it another sweep. Star. Cool. 
Hey, so you found a blueprint. And there's a message. Let's see. It says, stop nagging or I'll blast you out of here, Thomas. This message wasn't meant for a victim. But who threatened him? Gathering a sample of that powder should tell us. This must be the victim's notebook since it was on his desk. There's a lot of scribbling on this page, but these coffee spills make it hard to read. Let's try and uh, look up the annotations. What about these pieces of fabric? I agree. I so we were putting them back together. This investigation has taken off. Houston, we have liftoff. Check out that powder from the blueprint under microscope. Ace, is this who wrote that victim to the message? Wrote, wrote that me message to the victim. The victim's notebook has a doodle of an alien being interrogated by an FBI agent. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. And look, the FBI agent is asking, are you Russian? Looks like the victim was making fun of Agent Johnson. So ask the agent if he knew about it, Ace. Let's see if we find Randolph. If I ever see Randolph again in another case, I'm going to be so happy. I don't know how they're going to work it, but if they can make it, if they can get it done, that would be great. I miss Randolph. Yeah, well, this is a Sarah Jacket Ace, and look, that's our victim's name on the label. There's a footprint on it. And whose is it? I agree, it's best in the Jack to Theo. Gandalf, Randolph. I do miss Frank for sure. Um, they've substituted some amazing um, partners though, so. Your analysis the powder on the blueprint was cigarette ash. And you're right, we've seen the mission chief chain smoking, so Fury wrote this angry message to our victim. I wonder how serious he was about the message. Let's go ask Fury. I wonder if he didn't want to go continue with the launch because he found problems. Agent Johnson, did you know that Mr. Seagull had a poor opinion of you? Officers, are you aware that we're in a space race? My focus is on building muscle and sniffing out Soviets. Well, that's the thing. Mr. Seagan used your Soviet goal as a comic inspiration. Fine, if it'll get you off my back. When you're in this business, officer, right, you learn to follow your gut. And mine was telling me that this punk was colluding with the Soviets. And you know what I saw this wine do? Drink vodka. A Russian drink. Wait a minute, vodka? That's what you're basing your accusation on? No patriot would consume anything other than Moonbeam. Trust me, that Hamilton fellow and I drink it ourselves, and there are no two bigger patriots. Alright, Agent Johnson, no offense, but it sounds like you could use a few gay vacation days. Officer Ace, I know my job, and Segan was a Soviet ally, and I was this close to proving it. Sorry, I've been wondering, how did you become a detective? Well, as a kid, I spent more time in a holding cell than at school. I became just a regular that I started getting friendly with the detectives and listened when they talked amongst themselves. It seemed pretty cool, so I ended up applying to become a cadet. I remember getting my first police jacket. Speaking of which, what did you learn from our victim's jacket? We took some digging with the footprint. Footprint. The footprint comes from an army boot. 
The jacket itself was dusty with the same spent and dirt particles from the launch pad, which means that your victim was wearing his jacket when he got attacked. Your killer must use their foot to hold your victim down, and they're the ones wearing these boots. At least we now know our killer wears army boots, but they'll have to switch to prison boots soon enough. Boots. Boots. Hey sir, we found this message you left Mr. Seeking telling him to stop nagging or you get him blasted out of here. What can I say? Sometimes people need a reminding that they can be fired. Wait a minute, so you were mad at Mr. Segan for not following your orders? Well, Segan kept nagging me about doing more checks. He insists on doing a final round of tests today, which could have postponed the launch. Surely you don't want to send people into space if you're not sure they're going to come back. I was sure. I was confident. I'd just go to the gym and enjoy some moonbeam knowing we were ready. Segan just had to relax, like me. Right. You definitely seem relaxed. Officer Ace and I hope you didn't force Mr. Segan into relaxing eternally. Yep. Yep. Let's do this. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Red alert. I repeat, red alert. Unidentified individual on the launch pad. Brother. Who is it? Who's on the launch pad? Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in Chapter 3. It's been Pachini CD a bunch of stars we should be able to finish this hey this engineer's murder needs to be solved asap i agree what's going on yep individuals in his late 30s beard long hair and many tattoos oh great that sounds like kai what's he doing out there officer ace you know this man get him out of there right away sir ace i'm sorry i didn't know i'd set off the alarms i, I just didn't want to wait any longer to place the beacon I hate to sound like Amy, but she told us to wait for a reason. We can't risk time involving right in the middle of an investigation. Just head back to the time machine, okay? At least the beacon's set, Ace. We might as well leave it. But now we need to solve the murder even faster before time gets here. And Ace, since the mission chief is furious because of Kai's trespassing, I suggest we give him some space to return to the diner. I think that's true. Hey, this is some kind of a ward, and there's a victim's name on it, but there's also some faded text. I'll grab your brush. What's this torn piece of paper? Let's stick it back together. You're right. We find something against those diner dishes. Let's dig in. Ace, we only have so much time before the rescue mission gets here. Oh, I wonder if, if this guy was kind of a scumbag, maybe, and was stealing other people's ideas and passing them off as his own. Like the, the smart uh, Sarah employee. From hidden figures. Yep. Thought so. Our friend's name has been across town this ward, and Betty's name has been added instead. Did Betty think she deserved the award instead of him, Ace? Let's go ask the mathematician. from me. Ooh, that's not gonna make her happy. That's rough. Hey, this is a check from our victim, but it just says she'll get nothing from me, sis. 
So his sister was asking him for financial help, and Segan refused? Agree, it's clear the victim and his sister were on good terms. Let's go ask Joan about it. doing those dishes. You're right. It says her victim's name on it. Let's send the victim's audio recorder to Marina. If there's anything good on it, she'll find it. Alright, let's go to Marina. Nice. Alright, what's up, Betty? We know, we know. You're smarter than everyone else. Miss Hawkins, we found this award. It was meant for Sega, but your name's been added and his crossed out. Because it should have been mine. Mr. C stole it from me. Wait a minute. How so? I'd work and he'd take the credit. Said we women go from being our father's daughters to our husband's wives to our baby's mothers and that no one would take me seriously. Our work got him nominated for the Space and Science Award. I hoped he'd take this opportunity to tell the science world that we were a team and that I deserve recognition. I started working out to look my best for the ceremony. I was ready finally to, I was finally ready to enter the spotlight. But he brushed me aside. Mr. Segan never wished for me to be as equal. He just wanted to steal my glory. But now that he's gone, I can have the spotlight all to myself. It does sound like an awful colleague, but Officer Ace and I hope he didn't push you too far. Mm, I don't think so. Considering that she's a historical figure, I doubt that they would want to do anything like that. Mr. Ms. Segan, we found this check for your brother and... Oh, guess my brother. My brother will be a downer till the very end. Let me just take a swig of Moonbeam moon before we continue, all right, loves? Girls got grief, you know. Wait a minute, are you allowed to drink at work? That doesn't seem like a good idea. But we have other matters to focus on. Officer Ace has reason to believe in you and your brother were fighting. Oh, Thomas was my parents' fault. Favorite. Yeah, he'd make big bucks at Sarah while I'd spend months looking for a job. And even now that I have a job, I'm still struggling to pay rent. I just wanted to put some cash aside for me, but he wouldn't. Space is full of ego, Osher, Officer Ace. They've got their heads in the clouds while the rest of us have our feet on the ground. But in the end, we all flinch, finish in the same place. Oh, she looked devious. That was very devious sounding. Hi, Marina. Oh dear, Ace. Kai sure got in trouble for placing the beacon. I can't believe he'd sneak out without telling Amy. Yeah, but you can't blame him for wanting to help. All right, I know you're gonna you're gonna back him, Zara. Anyway, did you find anything interesting on that audio recording? Yes. So you can record all of his interviews and test on this device. And some of it's relevant to your investigation. So you seek a regular consult consultation with the astronaut Mark Hamilton. Hamilton tried to derail the conversation, talk about himself rather than answer Segan's questions. But Sega was never interested in talking about the astronaut's personality, which made Hamilton angry. Uh, he mentioned he forgot to mention any of this. I agree, Ace. We should have another talk with him. I don't know. I think it's uh, Becky, Becky, or Bucky Johnson could definitely be. It. I don't think it's this guy. This guy's an idiot, but it's not like it's him. Mr. Hamilton, Officer Ace knows that you held some resentment against Mr. Segan. Wait a minute, who told you that? Yeah, fine. Segan was always so focused on his research that he never took the time to focus on me. Sure, going to the moon is amazing for mankind, blah, blah, blah. But who is going to the moon? Me. I am the one performing this miracle. See, for Segan, I was just another test monkey to be probed and inspected. But I deserve the utmost respect, Officer Ace. Everyone else bowed down to me. The mission chief and the FBI agent admired me so much that they got me the same pair of army boots as me. But not Segan. He was a lab rat and he died like one. What goes around comes around. Dude, you are an idiot. I definitely think it's Bucky. But I could be wrong. Hey, so I had to talk to Kai about recklessly placing the, be the beacon earlier. We agreed to, to wait until you saw the investigation before moving on with the marooning protocol. Sure, but at least we now know what we need to do to be rescued. It's not a massive deal, is it? 
Well, Tide's rescue mission should have arrived a few hours after we set the beacon, and they can't land when the whole of Sarah is on high alert because of a murder. We'll leave the investigation part to us, Amy. Turns out the victim wasn't the picture-perfect engineer we initially thought. Yep, yep, we just did this. Yep. Go back to the crime scene. Let's see. Light tower. Oh, there's the def defib paddle. There they are. We were right. So it looks like the missing paddle from the defibrillator used to kill our victim. And there's some black substance on the paddle. Let's retrieve a sample. You checked it for a security camera. How smart of you. I didn't even think they had those in the 60s. Let's so unlock and see what the cameras recorded. Yeah, that's interesting. They probably did, but it was probably super low tech. Alright, we got a 9.15 hour that we will skim through very quickly. This substance from the paddle with the Ace. What have we here? <laughs> That's not it. Send the unlock camera to Kai Ace. Yep, let's speed them up. Let's see what the. Uh... Amy really bent my ear about seeking out and placing the vegan Ace, but I just feel like our being stranded is my fault. It's not really your fault. We're sabotaged. That's your beacon. Time will surely rec rescue us soon. Let's focus on the investigation. Did you discover anything from that camera we found on the crime scene? Yeah, it actually filmed part of the murder. Patient and killer's movements, it was obviously knew the camera was there, so I didn't see their face. But I did zoom on a mission badge your killer had on their clothes. Mm. The mission badge. So it might not be Bucky, I might be wrong. So it looks like it's either Hey, so here we should be rescued in a few hours, just in time for high tea with my sisters. Not a fan of tea, but maybe you and I can go for a celebratory drink once we're home. Love that, Zara. Anyway, let's talk about the sample you sent me. Keep one of the paddles that did fibulars used to kill our victim. What was it? It was a mix of dirt, but there's also some blood in there. The blood type was A negative, which doesn't match your victim, so it must be your killers. One of the killer type is A negative. Brings us one step closer to finding the maze. Hmm. It has to be this guy. It has to be. No? Really? It's the creepy astronaut. I never would have guessed. I thought for sure it wouldn't be him. Mr. Hamilton, you murdered Mr. Segan. Me? Killed my chance to prove my greatness? You got the wrong guy, Officer Ace. 
I don't think so. You were angry at Mr. C. You can win C for the hero you thought you were. You confront him on the launch pad and push him to the ground. Use your strength to hold him there and make him admit that you're the star of the mission. And when he refused, you press the defibrillator against his head. Wait a minute. No, I didn't. How could you kill him? You were both working on the same mission. Was proving your superiority over Seekin really that important to you? Alright, I confess. I killed Seekin, but not for the reasons you think. I only killed Seekin to stop the mission, to save myself from being sent to the moon. Officer Ace, I can't go to space. There's no air out there. And the moon? Are you crazy? What if I stay up there forever? Just thinking about it makes me sick. I mean, it's space. It's infinite. It's scary. Did you see the rocket? It's just flimsy metal. How is that going to get me to the moon and back? But who can I tell my fears to? For months now, I've been boasting about being a hero. I couldn't just suddenly admit that I was scared. I had to take matters in my own hands. So much the rocket early this morning to think I could tamper with it and cancel the launch. That's when Segan showed up and he saw me freaking out. He tried to calm me down, but his voice was extra noise and I started getting dizzy. Then I realized his brain was behind the space mission. His brain was the reason I was being sent to the moon. Dude, you are nuts. You've lost all control. Agent Health, the man responsible for Segan's murder is Mark Hamilton, the astronaut meant to go to the space mission. What? I, I couldn't go through the mission. It was too scary. So not only are you a murderer, but you're also a coward. You betrayed your country by postponing Sarah's greatest feat. The FBI will handle this. Officer Ace, although I'm grateful you found this killer, you must forget about this investigation. The papers can't get a hold of the story. Yes. Yes, that's true, Amy. Sarah and the FBI are going to keep it out of the papers. I guess that might be the reason why we've never heard of this murder. I mean, if it actually did happen in our history. Well, in any case, well done wrapping it up so quickly. It's now time the rescue ship won't arrive in the midst of a murder investigation. It's really a little surprising that they're not here already. Should be in a minute now. Yikes. That's not boding well that they haven't done it yet. But I'll see you guys in the, in the additional investigation with Pitching Ace 88. Alright folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back. Heading on to the additional investigation where we are stranded. Sent a beacon and hopefully they will land any minute now. Amy, did you say we rescued any minute? Because this is the longest minute of my life. I'm sure the ship is coming. We did everything in the protocol. Followed every detail. We just need to be patient. Ace, I'm sure the rescue mission is on its way here. It will arrive very soon. It has to. Face it, Amy. No one's coming. Of course someone's coming. Time won't leave us stranded. And, well, time? It's just taking a lot lot longer than protocol said it would. So what? We should wait around forever? Following the rules is always the best way. Clearly nobody's picking us up. I kind of have to agree, and the beacon's going to run out of power soon. But I've actually got an idea for a plan B, Ace. Yeah? Well, the first year still have the beacon's microphone picked up chatter near the launch site. Seems that the mission chief is looking for you. Great. What could he want? Hopefully nothing dire is happening with the moon landing mission. That historic event must take place today, or else too much will change. Okay, let's take Jack and see what Mr. Fouillet wants. And then you and I can talk to Kat. Or to Kai. Kai, I don't understand why time hasn't come to pick us up. What could be going on in 2029? Wish I knew, Amy. But I do have news concerning the damage the saboteur did to our time machine. I discovered that the saboteur actually messed with the conditional time probability, or CTP, in our main computer. And that's what fried our triphasal cortex. Basically, the fried cortex was a symptom, not the problem. See, the time traveling requires not only advanced materials, but also advanced mathematic formulas, which is what the saboteur modified. Oh, so we broke coding. How can we correct this? Well, no scientist like Chief Scott. My area exp expertise is limited in mechanics, but I knew what could help make sense of this formula is Ace. Time travel is based on the treatise Leonardo da Vinci wrote in 1512 called Ruminations on Time. We now know just how far ahead of his time da Vinci was. Time actually based all their research on his work. But before the treatise went from art collector to art collector, seen merely as precious objects, not groundbreaking science. Okay, so if we get our hands on it, we need to figure out who owned it in 1969. But how? There's no internet at the time. There was no internet, but there were networks, and Sarah was connected to the biggest one. If I could get their main hard drive from the control room, I'd get all the information needed to access the network. 
connected to all the U.S. University and government building buildings at the time, so the whereabouts of a priceless antique book should pop up. Let's go to the mission control room then. Officer Ace, I need your help. The president says that even though we have a replacement for that cuckoo astronaut, the moon landing mission is canceled. It says we need more time. If we can't let the Soviets win the space race, Officer Ace, the mission needs to happen today. Believe me, we know. I could just prove that we're ready. So he can plan it all before he was killed, but his checklist isn't on his desk. Running his checks would give us a green light for this launch. And that girl's meant to check the numbers from the checklist, the smart one. Then we could push all the stuff for the launch. Officer Ace is right. So Mr. Segan was on the launch pad before he died, so that must be where the checklist is. Let's go. Sarah's grateful for your help here, Officer Ace. Take this. Yeah, well, you guys are going to kind of cause a whole bunch of problems for me in the future, to be fair. I'm not coming to our rescue, but can you believe what we're doing? I wasn't even born when the moon landing appeared, and here I am helping setting up the launch. You're right. School says countdown checks. It must be seeing a checklist. It must reveal the fade text and help make history. I mean, that is kind of cool. Full access to the place, Ace. He said, processing unit is locked. Sarah's main hard drive must be in there. The hard drive will have all the access codes in our network. We will find information on the time track treaties whereabouts. Do you think he cracked that computer tower lock? Eh, we could probably do that. High five, Ace is like the engineer's checklist. We're one step closer to sending men to the moon. The mission chief told us to get this map the tissue for her to do the checks herself. I'll get the checklist and stay with her till she's done. Nice, nice, nice. Interesting. Wow, I see the hard drive from the computer tower is really pretty slim for its time. So I was really cutting edge. So this hard drive will help you access the network and find out where the treaties is? Yes, I'll just need a little bit more time, Ace. I'll get to work right away. Cool.
Sir Ace, I'm so glad you found Mr. Seagan's checklist. I validated the rock equation, the thermodynamics, as well as the subsets. And I also checked that the hypersonic stability is right in the right window. And that the eject max acceleration equation is valid, which they are. That sounds like rocket science to me. Well, there's no mathematic mathematical reason that the launch can't happen today. Great. Let's go talk to, to the mission chief that the launch can happen as planned. All right, thanks to the access codes on the hard drive, I was able to search through the networks for information on ancient artifacts. I got a hit up for the trees. It was recently auctioned off to a certain Lorna Westerberg. Well, Ace, she was a famous Hollywood actress at the time. She plays in all my favorite black and white movies. Well, we're gonna have to find her to get that tree, Ace. Find her, but that means leaving Houston, doesn't it? What about the rescue mission? They're picking us up here. Amy, you must realize that the hope of getting rescued is getting slimmer and slimmer every hour. I do, but great. What should we do? Chief Scott would have mismatched quotation up his sleeve to give us all an energy boost. All right. Well, Kai, you keep working out where Lorna Westerberg is, and we'll stay in Houston for three more days. If by then time hasn't arrived, we'll go find the actress in the trees. You're the poor boss. I'll report back when I get some more information on where Lorna is. Good news, sir. We found Mr. Seagan's checklist, and Miss Hawkins did the math and signed off on the launch. Curious about some done checklist, Officer Ace. The launch is off, but everything looks good. What's the problem now? That crazy astronaut hit the key to the main control panel. All of our computers are worthless unless I can access it, which means the mission is postponed indefinitely. Pull yourself together, man. Are you really going to give up on making today a historic day, or are you going to let the Soviets walk on the moon before us? No, no, you're, you're right, Officer Ace. There's not much time left before the launch opportunity window closes. The key's got to be hidden somewhere around here. And Officer Ace and I will help search the control room until we find it. Grab a bite while you do, officers. Dude, I am on my way. Yeah, you're right. Lauren is probably the next victim. If we're looking for her, totally means she's the next victim. Oops. Misclick. Ace is a personal preference kit, or PPK. I should ask what belongings in here take to space. And this one apparently belongs to Mark Hamilton. He's the one the mission chief suspects to have hidden the key. I agree, Ace. We should search his kit. Well, that wasn't really a sneaky suspicion. Hmm. Interesting. His flask just says strong, that's funny. Alright, there we go. This must be the key to the control panel. The astronaut did hide it in this kit. Crazy to think that such a basic key is what unlocks an incredible mission. Let's get this key to the mission chief. The launch has to happen today or we'll have serious historical repercussions. Eh, something tells me that time may not even be a thing anymore in the altered present. too fast for the game. Officer Ace, now that we have the key to the control panel, we can synchronize the computers for the launch. And allow me to introduce Neil. He's Hamilton's replacement. Neil Armstrong. Officer Ace, this is an amazing opportunity. Feels like I was meant to be on this mission. I would have preferred different circumstances, of course, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Go finish your pre-launch test, Neil. Two hours left before we go to the moon. As for you, Officer Ace, protocol for busy being in the control room during the launch. I'm sorry, but you gotta get out of here. I got you a little something. Not sure what size you wear, but the Sarah's gift shop lady swore this is all the rage with the youth right now. I 
So time still hasn't shown up. No, we might need to make move on to a plan B. Kai's working on it right now. Cool, but just let me say that Ace and I helped set up the actual moon landing mission. Totally insane, right? Amazingly well done. I'm glad that at least one thing went according to plan today. We know we could do some cheering up. How? I knew that was happening. It kept de it kept delaying, delaying, delaying. Really, I missed the ending of that. That sucks. <sighs> what a bummer. Yep, yep, yep. She dies. She dies. Ah, uh, so we were definitely trying to get there. Alright guys, case nine will be next Thursday. I'll see you guys all there. This there, this is Eight. Over now.